Okay, so now in this particular lab, we are going to focus on OCR, which is Optical Character Recognition. Basically, the lab title is Read Text in Images. So we are going to read text, which is actually inside the images. Now, this is going to be a very important concept because this is going to be useful in the coming modules where we are going to focus on document intelligence. But as of now, let's focus on this particular lab. Uh, we have already loaded our lab environment and the first step which we have to do is we have to start our Visual Studio and we have to clone the Git repository which is actually going to have our sample project. Now all these Git repositories are actually officially from Microsoft so when you guys want to try this you can use the same repository URLs. I am just going to open Control shift p and uh, we will execute the command git clone and here we have the URL. If you already have an access of the scalable labs, then I advise you that whenever you are doing the lab steps, you should always do this tick mark so that you understand that what amount of progress you have made in this particular lab. Now, this repository will be cloned very soon. And once it is cloned, we are going to move forward and we are going to deal with the C-sharp project inside that. While the repository is getting cloned, I think let's open portal.azure.com in the edge browser of this lab environment. This is the cloud slice environment, so obviously I'm providing the lab environment username and password. This is going to give me a temporary cloud subscription. Okay, once we have logged in, let's go back to steps. Inside the Azure portal, we have to create Azure AI service in the specific regions which are mentioned here because maybe in only those regions, we have OCR available. So we are going to use Azure AI vision service in this case also. I'm going to click on create resource. I'm going to search for Azure AI services and will provision an Azure AI service as usual. If you already have Azure AI service provision, you can just forward this video and you can check the steps which are after this creation of the Azure AI service. I'm choosing a region North Europe. Give the name of the service. and we'll click on review plus create. The next step which we have to do is once the service is provisioned, we have to take the keys and endpoint of the service so that we can connect the service with our application. While this service is getting provisioned, let's go back to our Visual Studio code. We have a lab files. Inside that, we have multiple sample applications. We are going to focus on the sample application, which is actually a specific lab number five, which is OCR. Now, if you want to try the other sample applications which are available, you can try, you can go through the code of that. I'm going into OCR. Inside that, we have C-sharp. Inside that, we have read text. And then this is the code which we have to go through. But obviously, before we go through the program.cs, let's go to appsettings.json, which is actually going to look for AI service endpoint and AI service key. So let's provide a connection with the Azure AI service using this. My service is provision. I'm going to click on go to resource. I'll click on resource management, keys and endpoint. Let's copy the endpoint. Hey guys, sorry for interruption. My name is Maruti and I'm here to make a very important announcement. I hope you are liking our videos and you're doing a continuous learning with us on an Azure cloud and AI related topics. If you are enjoying this thing, I'm going to announce skilltech.club, which is our upcoming website, which is going to be launched very soon. We are here to tell you one thing that everyone who is a subscriber of this particular channel 
will get Azure Cloud and Azure AI related certification courses free of cost in skilltech.club. So you will be a part of the skilltech.club kind of a membership automatically free of cost. And everyone who's a subscriber of this particular channel will get those benefits which are available in that. So what are you waiting for? I request you to please subscribe to this channel and share it with your friends and families if they are also interested in Azure Cloud and AI learning. That's it from my side. Now you can carry on with your learning. Thank you. And a key. I'm going to save this. And once this is saved, because the lab particular configuration is saved, now our application is connected with our Azure AI service. So let's go through program.cs so that we can understand what kind of code is written inside that. Meanwhile, if we focus on the steps, we are done up to this point. We have actually added keys and endpoint. And exactly after this, the first thing they are asking us is, you have to add a package, which is Azure AI Vision Image Analysis Package. We are going to add a specific version of that. So let's go to the terminal for this particular project, read text, open an integrated terminal. Yes, once my terminal is open, I'm going to execute this command, which is .NET add package. And we are going to add Azure AI Vision Service package. It looks like package is successfully added. It's installed with this. And if that is done, we have to move forward to the steps, which is actually telling us that we have to go to our app settings or JSON and we have to provide keys and endpoint. Now, we already did that thing. The package is getting installed. It's going to be done very soon. But then after that, we have to go into our code and then we have to see the code and we have to do the needful changes inside that. Yes, package installation is successfully done. Now it's the time we have to go to program.cs, which is actually already having some namespaces on the top. We are going to add one namespace, which is using Azure AI Vision Image Analysis. Now, because it's going to show you a specific comments associated with that, it will be easier for you to add the code at the right place. We have added the namespace, which is going to be using that package which we have added. And now after this, we have to add a section which is going to help us to authenticate the service. As you can see this program class and main method, we are actually trying to use configuration builder and we are trying to read the values of my endpoint and key, which we have provided inside appsetting.json. This code is more or less always same in every application which you are developing. Now, inside this section where we have authenticate Azure AI Vision client, we are going to add a section which is this. Now, let me just format it quickly. This is actually going to create an instance of a class which is image analysis client. Now, obviously, if I move my mouse on this, this is the class which is helping me to associate with my image analysis service. This is going to take my URL, which is the service endpoint, as well as the key using which the authentication will be done. Exactly after this, we have to add certain configurational logic inside our main method. So I'm scrolling down. We have a section which is menu for the text reading function. And now inside this, if we check, we have a simple configurational code, which is trying to read the line from the command prompt. Whatever you're going to associate with that is actually going to take one image. This image file is actually having multiple options. Right now we have two images, lincoln.jpg and node.jpg, and both of these images are actually available inside the images folder. If you scroll down, we have a logical code where we are trying to read the value which is going to be added by the user and based on that we are going to pick one of the image and whichever image you're going to provide here as an input we are going to analyze that image and we will try to read the text from that particular image using this code the logic of this particular code is very simple we are again using that image analysis result client and then using that image analysis result we are just trying to call one method which is analyze Whatever is returning from the analyze method will be stored inside this result. And that is the same result which we are trying to read. If it is not null, we will try to read that particular result and we'll try to print that thing.
Now, because there can be multiple text and characters which can be there inside one single image, we are running a simple for each loop here, which is going to return the text which is detected inside the image. Now, obviously, we can write any particular logic inside this. We have an additional code section here also, which is going to help us to not only read the text from that particular image, it's also going to help us to highlight and create some kind of a bounded box with that particular text. So we are just adding this particular code here. This is my code. Let me just format this as well. And as you can check this code, this is actually trying to use system.drawing class first because this is a internal class which is helping you to edit that image and add some kind of a drawing or some kind of a selection or some kind of a blocks on that. Using this, we are using a graphics dot from image, which is going to take that image. We are using this particular color and then using the pen, we are going to highlight the section. If you check the code inside console.write line, we are trying to print the line dot text so that we can understand what text is detected. And then after this, we have a multiple sections. The first thing is we have a variable called draw line polygon. This is going to draw a polygon for that particular line. And it's just a variable which is right now Boolean kind of variable, which is true. Now, Exactly in the below logic, to draw the polygon, we are using an if condition. Initially, it will be true, and then it's just going to draw the polygon surrounded by that particular characters or text or lines which are detected with that. Now, same kind of logic we can repeat for any particular character or words. Now, once this is done, we are finally going to save that particular image output in a separate file which is going to be text.jpg. As you can see, we do not have any file with the name text.jpg here. But the new file which is generated with the highlighting and marking with that pen is going to be stored with this particular new sim image. Now, before this, we actually have two more blocks which we have to implement. We have a section which is written the position bounding box around each line. Now, this code is also available if we scroll down. So, that is something which we are going to do. Now, right now in the steps, it's showing me that we can run the application and we can check it is running or not. Now, I know it's going to run actually, so I'm not going to rerun this multiple time. I'm just proceeding with completion of this particular code. In this section where we have written the position bounding box, I'm going to put this particular code. This is a one-liner code, which is actually creating a bounding polygon with that particular line. And then it's just going to join that with each and every word so that we can detect that this is actually one particular line which is detected inside this image. Now with this, we also have one more section which is actually going to read each word which is detected by the image. And this code also we are putting here. Basically, this is also trying to do same kind of a logic with the bounded polygon. But because we are focusing on each word inside that particular section, we are going to make sure that this time we are taking word.text. And then if we are reading each and every word, we also want to make sure that we are highlighting the particular confidence score which is going to be higher. And based on that, we can create a bounding polygon for each and every word which is there. Now, this logical configuration is going to draw that bounded polygon kind of a word with that. Now, all these three sections which we are trying to implement here, maybe if you don't want all three, you can change it or you can customize it as you want. I'm going to save my logic. And if the logic is working or not, if I want to check that, all I have to do is I have to run this application. I'm executing a command here in the terminal, .NET run. Let's run this. While running this application, you have to observe that it's first going to ask you which image you would like to use. Now, there are two images, lincoln.jpg and node.jpg. Let me just see lincoln.jpg first. This is one image, which is maybe going to have Abraham Lincoln. Yep, there's Abraham Lincoln. And behind this uh, statue, we have a wall in which something is written. Same way we have something which is a node.jpg, which is actually a handwritten note where we have a shopping list kind of a thing. Now this is asking me right now, enter a number, which particular image text you would like to provide as an input. I'm saying number one, which is going to take lincoln.jpg. And if I provide that, let's see if we are getting a text which is read from that or not. Now I got the result. Let me just scroll a little up so that we can understand what is generated with that. You can see, first it is showing me in this temple. Now let me just increase the height of this. Let me click on the lincoln.jpg first. Now this is something which is the first line associated with that. So it's showing me in this temple 
and then as in the hearts of the people now this is exactly line by line reading those words which are mentioned inside this if we zoom this little more you will be able to understand that is this correct or not now after this is actually showing you one more thing there which is bounded polygon now in this case this bounded polygon is not visible in this image because this is not a generated image this is original image which you have provided as an input the bounded polygon and the selections are going to be visible in text.jpg now because we are providing only one image file name there are chances that with this multiple bounded polygons is actually going to overwrite for each and every word now finally it's showing me results are saved in text.jpg if I click on text.jpg, I'll have the same image, but this time in this image, each and every word which is detected with the help of this process is actually highlighted with that particular pen and the color which we have mentioned. This shows me that how cool is this and how accurate is this to identify a proper text from that particular image. Now, same way, if I try to run this application once again, this time in spite of lincoln.jpg maybe i'm going to put node.jpg so i'm going to say 2 and if i hit enter again it's going to execute that call this time it's showing me a new image is generated and you can see each and every word is highlighted with that particular box it's showing me each and every word which they have read with the help of ocr remember ocr is optical character recognition you already understood the concept of this in the previous video. Now this time this lab is going to make sure that how you can write a code. Also do not forget all the samples are available on the official Microsoft repositories. So you have the repository URL which is this. Make sure you're going to use this and you can take this code and you can implement the same way with your Azure AI vision service. Now with this this is the end of this particular lab after this we do not have anything so it's just showing me that we can clean up resources and we can just see the handwritten text in that particular image so this is fine we are good with this thank you so much see you in the next lab